So yeah, thanks again so much, all of you, for 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 joining uh, today in in vastly different circumstances in different parts of the country and different parts of Europe. Um, um, for what it's worth, it feels really good to connect uh, in this way. Uh, um, and maybe we can start off with just a quick round of introductions. Tell, tell us a little bit of, of who you are, what your role in Gara Media is, and, and, and where you are at the moment, and, and, uh, and what, what's that, that like for you, so that people who are watching this can get some idea of the experience. Uh, Sari, can I ask you to start? Yeah, of course. Uh, thank you for, for talking about this. Uh, so basically, we are a team of uh, Gwara Media. We are regional media from Kharkiv. Uh, and, uh, before war, we were uh, kind of thematic, cultural, niche media. We, were, we, are, we did not have kind of hot news uh, or something like, you know, like just blow something hot. Uh, and uh, well prepared right now but um, we were working with uh, creative content with uh, some analytics with uh, stories we were working with um, culture and creative industries and uh, try we're trying to highlight uh, um, uh, artists uh, processes in this area and uh, had vast uh, experience of kind of cultural projects, uh, whether the digitalization or uh, theater critic, like Olena is professional theater observer and critic, or it's storytelling or it's uh, something else. Uh, but uh, for now, we, um, we woke up on 24 of February from strikes over our cities, like uh, I wake up at 5 a.m uh and everybody like it, it was a shock and we understood that it started everybody was discussing about this and that russia would invade to ukraine but nobody could not believe this and uh, from the times uh, uh, everything had changed dramatically because uh, everything changed yeah <laughs> so as was before and after and uh, so i am located in kharkiv and uh, still here as uh, we decided to be here. Yaroslav is also in Kharkiv. He is not in sh shelter of the uh, kind of like me in office where we are no, you know, minus one, minus two floor office space. Yaroslav is in the home space. Dasha ran from Kherson that got occupied now by Russia almost in two days to the Western Ukraine and Moldova and somewhere else now she's in Italy. And Elena staying in Kyiv and we continue to work on on our staff and you know, trying to live here and uh, to build some operations and to know to find answer on the question of how to live further now. So this is how it goes from my side. Um, Olena from Kiev, uh, maybe a little bit of, of, of how you're doing and, and what's it like to be in Kiev at the moment? Um, yeah, hi. Hi. Uh, so I'm, uh, uh, you asked me about uh, my role in this team uh, I'm an I'm a chief editor um, editor and th this means that I'm responsible for the content especially if we are talking about uh, so called slow content the so so called because um, before this war we uh, uh, worked as a, a so called slow media this was our niche um, uh, yeah, so uh, in Kyiv today it's uh, it's a, it's a sunny day actually. <laughs> Everything is fine, and uh, I feel uh, myself much more comfortable than, for example, a week ago, when there were uh, several troops like just near Kyiv. Right. They they were approaching the city. Um, so now it's much more better. Uh, this is what I can say. Definitely. Um, um, Olena, if I may ask, I mean, uh, you and, and, and Seri and, and others wrote on your website and for Eurozine a series of diaries uh, um, um, during the last couple of weeks. 
And um, if I remember correctly, you wrote something about that, that continuing the work with Guara Media is almost like, uh, like it gives you something meaningful to do uh, other than just waiting. Uh, um, um, do you still feel that way? I mean, is, is that what gives this all of this a bit meaning that you can still continue doing your stories, trying to help in, in any way you can? Or, or how should I understand continuing doing your work in, in these contexts? Uh, yeah, of course, as uh, Sergei mentioned, everything has changed. And for example, we, uh, we run uh, the news, the, the, the newsroom. Mm -hmm. um, we started to, to cover uh, like events that happening like right there. In Kiev, for example, especially in Kharkiv, uh, so he uh, um, started shooting uh, reportages, video uh, and things like that, captions. Um, yeah, uh, if we uh, are talking about like the, the first, the very first day of the situation, uh, my work was maybe the only one thing that I can, uh, I don't know, stick to and just feel myself more or less calm because everything is just chaotic and uh, abs there's absolutely no idea what will be like the next day. Um, and uh, yeah, this, this idea that you, uh, beside all this, uh, this chaotic uh, news suite uh, and, and all this information that you, you uh, have work to do, uh, and this work is uh, important to, uh, to, to your audience, to, to, to a lot of people, uh, and you have to not just, uh, I don't know, sit and, uh, and, and worry about everything that happened. You have to also um, <clears throat> collect this information. Um, you have to to cover a lot of things. Uh, you have to be not to be biased about them. And in this, it just uh, uh, it is helpful uh, if we are talking about like uh, how not to to be mad about all all this. Um, how to keep yourself uh, your mindset. I don't know less or more. Um, yeah, just how 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 not to to be crazy. How not to? Um, yeah, I think mm. this uh, this was <laughs> the the basic idea. Yeah, th th thank you, um, Yaroslav. Can you tell me a little bit about where you are, what what you're doing, how you're experiencing this? I'm a marketing producer. Right now, I stay still in Kharkiv at my home. And uh, before the war was starting, I must to go do uh, my little trip to the Lithuania. And in February 24, I must to go to the Kyiv uh, mm -hmm. at 7 a.m. And when I woke up at 5 a.m. and start uh to uh take my clothes for a train i was cute this explosions and i i understood that i um will mm, that i will not go in anywhere mm -hmm. and i still stay here uh, a couple of days it was really a shock for me. I uh, didn't want to eat, to speak to everybody, and uh, doing anything. It really was hard. Uh, right now, a couple of days, I went out for a walk, and uh, it's still sometimes bombing in our city. We hear the shooting near us over the Kharkiv. And uh, two or three days ago, at the night, four bombs flew near us, uh, nearby. Uh, and two houses uh, near my house. 
uh, they right now without windows and uh, this is not really mm. is it in any way shape or form possible for you to continue some kind of work or, or is it for you like Olena was saying that that just doing some kind of work gives gives you some kind of meaning or is that I mean is it just right now just waiting it's hard to explain really mm. um, yeah. it's like 50 50 I try to be a meaning and um, there is a little problem when I sit for the computer and start my work after 10, 20, 30 minutes, uh, always I hear an explosion and I need to go to the corridor and sit uh, here about one hour or less or more. And then I go again to the computer, again, try to work. And uh, this is like in a circle. Uh, yeah, it's hard to explain mm. really. Uh, well, thank thanks again for 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 sharing this and for for being here, of course. Um, um, Darshak, if our connection is is stable enough, uh, um, yes. um, <laughs> um, thanks also for for joining. Um, um, I mean, you've had a long voyage uh, uh, during uh, this invasion. Can you tell us a little bit about that and and how you're doing right now? Uh, thank you for your questions. Uh, from the first day of war, I understood that uh, Kherson near Crimea and uh, Russian military uh, will be there uh, so fast, so quickly, yes. And mm -hmm. uh, uh, I leave the city with my boyfriend and his brother. Uh, we, we thought that uh, it was... Uh, that it will be a few days uh, conflict maybe maybe uh, we uh, back to home soon but uh, no <laughs> so we des uh, we decided to go to moldova uh, we visit moldova but uh, it's some difficult with uh, apartment uh, in kishinev uh, a lot of refugees a lot of ukrainians and uh, uh, price of uh, apartments uh, rise and we decided to change country uh, because uh, refugees from ukraine uh, still uh, uh, still go to moldova and uh, we decided to go to italia so uh, we have some voyage uh, Moldova, uh, then uh, Roman, uh, then uh, Hungary, uh, then uh, oh, I can't uh, rem remember. <laughs> so and Italy. Mm. Uh, we have uh, two days, two third th days uh, for this uh, trip. It was difficult. <laughs> And, and 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 you, you can you tell a, a little bit about that 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 leaving Ukraine? I mean, did you go by train or by car? And and how was that experience? Uh, we leave Ukraine at uh, seven a.m. twenty first February uh, by the car. Mm -hmm. uh, it was uh, so scared for me because uh, uh, we didn't know what uh, ca uh, what can happen. Uh, we yeah. didn't know anything. Uh, maybe uh, there are want to shoot in the uh, roads. We don't know. We didn't know. So it was uh, some dangerous. Uh, we go through uh, Mikolaev uh, and uh, there are some shootings. And we didn't saw that, but uh, my friends in Mikolaev uh, told me that uh, uh, you must be... Uh, uh, you you must uh, leave the city uh, so fast because there are some shooting. Some uh, we don't there don't know what happens here. So uh, also we uh, go through the Vinitsa and uh, Uman and <laughs> we were shocked because we see some explosion. It was near our car. Mm. Uh, we saw how something uh, 
explosion in the air in the and it's it so <laughs> scares me. Mm. Um, thanks, Dasha, for, for for sharing that. I'm happy to see you're safe for now. Um, um, maybe all of you and, and Sari, maybe I can go back to you. Um, you you started talking a little bit about what uh, Guara Media did before the invasion. I mean, and and and, and maybe you and all of you can talk a little bit about uh, uh, the company because as far as I understood, I mean, you started a company in 2018 and and uh, doing a variety of things, storytelling, working with different kinds of clients uh, and very much, uh, if I understood your manifesto correctly, to support the creative industries uh, across, the, uh, across Ukraine. And um, um, maybe talk a little bit about that mission and, 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 and is, this, is that still something you can see yourself doing? Because one thing that has really struck me is how people from the diff, from the cultural sector and the creative sector in Ukraine are doing all kinds of things, performing music, making documentary films. I think that's what you're doing as well at the moment. Uh, um, to keep on working, to keep on documenting what's what's going on uh, in your country, uh, and and uh, can can you talk a little bit about that? Uh, yes. Yeah, so we started uh, maybe earlier a little bit. So basically, the idea to the of the brand, yeah, because this brand appeared much more recently, was kind of uh, become you know from the revolution of 2014 when the Russian of dignity, because uh, I was kind of, for example, IT, you know, quality man manager in maybe eight years ago, and uh, I just understand that I can just sit and do some outsourcing. So you need to do something more, some impact, and uh, it's the project started like a company or organization, I call it, mm -hmm. uh, from will to do something more, yeah, like to change, to modernize country, because we and I, I was understanding that. Uh, uh, we have challenges, uh, some historical and kind of not to work with them and just uh, be in flow. It's kind of it would not would not bring us somewhere far away. So uh, we started like some cultural organization. We were looking for our business model. We were changing it several times, but mostly in the time of looking kind of product market fit, how it calls, uh, we were different doing type of things, events, uh, some cultural activities and so forth. But in 2014-19, we started to transform to media platform and uh, more and more to work with content production. And uh, as uh, organization, we had, uh, like in 2021, we were in, in the end, we were having kind of media platform, creative studio inside it that was part of the business model we were doing content for us ourselves uh, decreases costs for uh, uh, different ngo cultural social projects uh, supporting in uh, content for example we did <clears throat> audio guides for museum yeah by creative studio some landings for different artists and brands uh, some yeah this kind of economy activities because we kind of need to sustain because uh, maybe I think uh, maybe 70 percent of business model of media in Ukraine estimate it's kind of or political money or um, grants or something like that. Maybe they do some advertisement, but uh, I don't believe it's totally due to all the needs. <clears throat> and uh, also we were having media laboratory uh, just before war. We created this artist uh, park of sculpture in augmented reality. It's kind of virtual park for that artist uh, we did together. And this was run in parallel with uh, storytelling, uh, journalism work, research, analytic, and so forth. And uh, so I said, media studio laboratory, uh, it's we were even having space, we were trying to create kind of co-working slash media lab uh, where we would be experimenting with different innovation tech, because I, I personally understand that in order to sustain, we find together talents and create with them something amazing to sell because uh, like donor funding is not the reason and it's kind of also disrupt our energy basically entrepreneurship entrepreneurship energy of team and it's uh, have some limitation but it's still keep cool and this fourth one it was kind of some we are one of the values we have values kind of table is kind of institution institutions we are trying to be an institution. For example, with Dasha, we met, she's from Kherson, yep, and we are together. Dasha came for us to Kharkiv for um, kind of 
two week training here yeah? she come to our newsroom exchange exchange here yeah, from her son and uh, i said dasha cool let's let's work further yeah and uh, dasha working in some another local media it belonged to some it's kind of for me it's kind of archaic <laughs> it was a little bit archaic i said dasha you let's join to us and uh, it's also helped us uh, this institutional kind of access and approach to the development of journalism and uh, to do something more than just you know to be commercial or uh, kind of donor funded organization we were trying we were always were trying to be oriented on impact yeah like kind of to change uh, the situation uh, we have the same that in manifesto yeah like and then we were thinking that uh, uh, in order to ukraine to transform uh, one of the core stuff is to have strong post-industrial economy and uh, culture and culture yeah because uh, mm. it's it's very important to rerun to relaunch yeah, to rebuild the country because it's a lot of problem with identity post-soviet maybe some attacks on our ukrainian identity it's problem with modernization because uh, yours is cool <laughs> but sometimes it's cool and it's just so globalized so they just run away to another countries uh, and don't live here so we will uh, and uh, we were looking for ways to do qualified uh, journalists. I don't know what is this, how is it now, only maybe somebody external people could estimate this, but uh, we want uh, where we want to go. So it was mm-hmm. our, this was our context we were working with. Um, th- thanks, Sari. Um, Olena, if I can follow up on something you said earlier about about continuing to, to make news and, and to do the work. Um, and in the context of what Sarah just said about the mission of Guara Media to, to support the creative industries and to develop uh, and to build on uh, and rebuild uh, Ukrainian national identity. I think it was in your diary where you talked about that one of the more sort of stunning experiences of these last of this month has been to see uh, like people really coming together. Uh, like, uh, uh, I mean, if there was any any question about Ukrainian identity, it's 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 been answered uh, now. I mean, uh, forgive me if I'm being way too naive about saying this, but 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 uh, uh, has that changed your work, or, or 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 do you see your work sort of contributing to that, building onto that, or or, or how, how can I best understand this? Um, well, I can say that uh, my work uh, has changed uh, like very much. Because of this understanding and and because of the uh, because of witnessing all this uh, uh, people that are united today mm-hmm. uh, in their statements and they are just uh, in, in desire to live in this country and things like that. Because uh, as uh, so he said previously, Guar Media uh, it, it it was a kind of um, the the very poor let's say idea for for the guara media uh, to see this country like that um uh, like like a modern country uh, which has to uh, uh independent country of course in all meaning mm-hmm. uh both in culture and economic and uh, other maybe uh fields uh so i think that um Maybe one, one, uh, the only one feature that uh, intensified a bit, I'd say, uh, is the idea that uh, also the um, in, in our val- values in uh, the value in, in values of, of this organization, uh, there is uh, one thing is uh, uh, that we want to be helpful for people, uh, and that the content of our media has to be. Uh, uh, like useful, helpful. It's not just words. It's it's not just articles. Uh, it has to be helpful. And this th- thing really uh, it was maybe like the first thought that come to my mind when I uh, started to think how we can work during these circumstances and uh, in the war in the state of war. Mark, your microphone is uh, switched off. <laughs> so, sorry, uh, my dogs were barking. I didn't want to in- interrupt. <laughs> um, um, 
And it, thanks for, for sharing that. And, and in terms of being helpful, and I don't know, Jaroslav, if I can ask you this or, 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 or all of you, um, one of the projects that, that Guara Media has been working on is this bot uh, um, called Perevirka, um, uh, which uh, I looked it up. It, it means sort of like audit or test, right? And, 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 and if I understand it correctly, it's a Telegram channel, a bot where you can send information to and the bot sort of verifies the degree of accuracy or truthfulness of this information uh, uh, whoever feels comfortable talking a little bit about that and telling us about the development of this bot and and how how you're using it uh, would be really great to hear so i would reply here on this kind of so uh, we had this idea even before right kind of like what it was kind of ah uh, one one page really is concept kind of let's do some bot so that readers could send us something like for that but um, uh, why? Because we wanted to grow in journalism, yeah, basically, and uh, we understand that it would it would be cool, yeah. You know, I don't think idea was in January, maybe just one pager. So I have idea folder in Google Drive. Idea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I put uh, some ideas and the standings there, and uh, even so on the um, on the kind of first days, I understand that it would be long. Yeah, because I saw kind of, kind of, yeah, you like sleeping and you see rocket strikes on your city, like, kind of, it's rocket strike, Syrian, you come into the shelter, you can believe this, but I understand almost immediately that it would be long and uh, it would be long. Yeah, like, you know, how much it would take, three, seven, eight, seven. I was thinking in first weeks, I was thinking it would be kind of three, three months. Now I think uh, after Bucha, Mariupol and all what they do, it would be long and um, uh, we it would be long. I uh, pick up that idea and started to share it with team. We we, we share this uh, insight on meeting like we had and in two days we had kind of meeting what we wanna do and everybody was sharing the ideas. Uh, Dasha was running uh, to the another to the Moldova it was some something unclear whether it would be you know what should we run or not like it's very insane and. Um, and in Ukraine, we have huge volunteer uh, movement. It's amazing. Like, uh, and even we speak as journalists, locals, they say it, we are shocked that uh, instead of running somewhere, people got united together. Yeah, like, and as they go against tanks and with uh, Ukrainian flags, yeah, like just not afraid. You know, when in Russia, people kind of one policeman speaking like, oh, I know, big line of people with their hand and they run here, like people come. Uh, to the Russian soldiers with uh, flags and trying to stop them, manifesto. It's much another situation. And uh, we started to look volunteers who had, can help us uh, with this. So when we launch bot, how it works, this is kind of bot is a point where people can send us some data. And uh, this, I can share basically maybe screen if you want. Is it mm -hmm. good? Uh, and... Um, uh, share some data to the bot, uh, then uh, it goes with us to the chat and kind of where tickets fall in the Telegram chat. And uh, we started firstly by our team, it was a small amount of uh, requests, but then we started to open call for volunteers. We pick up kind of 400 volunteers, and we still can process all the people. And um, basically, and we found programmers from Lviv, from Kyiv, from elsewhere, from all the Ukraine people also all over Ukraine. So it did fall to our chat. So um, we started firstly to gather all this information and we were kind of amazed by, it was so huge amount kind of propaganda, different channels like uh, nationalists in Ukraine do something like, uh, uh, from Russian narratives, like some, there is some Z correspondent. So Z is Russian tank signals, kind of Z correspondent on something like, and uh, you can believe this like horrible thing that is writing like, and people started to ask, uh, send some data and we started to reply them, to be honest, in the beginning manually, yeah, like basically we were one point where they were writing and it was distributed to different people and for, and uh, uh, I will show how it's looking. Yeah, you, you you should be able to share the screen, I think. Yeah, yeah I will open. So, uh, as the specific is, we run it for one month, and then we got really overwhelmed. 
uh, and we uh, so do you see yes, yes like mm -hmm. so there is sort of chat but uh, we have kind of yeah so this is the bot this right. is a working channel uh, we, in one day we got 9000 requests from people to check some data and we got we understood that we should pause this because in that operations we can't handle all this data because people like asking like everything for example in one day we get 50 270 requests on mm -hmm. whether Jerinovsky, some deputy of kind of russia maybe no not is alive or not you know right and uh, it's you understand that if you would work with such type of requests it's kind of it's and but in first day uh, of course maybe weeks it was important because people um because people are um, doing uh yeah and it's because uh, people are sending like anything yeah and we will understand that of course one of the flow is kind of to give them stabilization yeah that some journal is and psychological yeah media some response yeah somebody helps somebody there is some some it's a, and working with truth in the society yeah, like and there's some stabilization you're working like this yeah for example with that uh, so yes yeah, propaganda channel from russia comes you know there is mama we come in uh um rodina match from kiev is on is ibc's from uh, far away uh, we would be closer come come we russians would come something like there is some channel like uh, how like behavior and kind of uh, kind of moral of Russian uh, troops and army and people send this to check and this and we saw a lot of shitty channel uh, some war chronicle from Russia yes how they attack our country people send this for check yeah this is how it goes and uh, we we paused this for a while and we have like uh, Albansky, it's a lot of very different information. A lot. We were thinking about some AI or something stuff to automate it, but we got now we stuck. We are thinking how to do this. And basically, we have kind of you know place where it comes with tickets. We have fake, reject, and true, and to comment to leave comment for these people. And this is how it goes. And there is channel with kind of moderators. Uh, where we discuss different cases and we have another channel where we escalate these cases for example if uh, kind of you know different grades there is volunteers junior for checking and senior for checkers if somebody sees it's really some info info wave we are escalating this task and send it to the to the to the research yeah for some for example we will not for example for whether Zhirinovsky died or alive, we was uh, giving reject because it's not what we need to check. Yeah, and we're saying I can reject some, I don't know, uh, let's be calm, rely on official sources. There is course on fact checking, check and check it by yourself. Yeah, like, and because it does not help people to survive or something like this. Now we have one, 109 volunteers. We started to also say with them, guys, first wave stopped, let's do, let's do better. If you can't do this by just in chat, go away and let's be in touch for further stuff. So this is how how it goes, uh, and we did this like with programmers. And it's on GitHub. We can share with anybody who want to do this mm -hmm. to check uh, uh, what we have. And the, of course, it's important. We were hoping that it, uh, we would be needed to have some automatization, some automatization for this stuff. Because we are hoping, oh, it would be easy to automate. And um, in first time, understand kind of what is the difference with journalism and all that kind of telegram channel is some data for anonymous stuff. Because basically we see that a lot of data just copying from one source to another. Right. We saw that there's millions in Ukraine, telegram, Viber, chats uh, with no name owners who are sending some data, responses. Uh, it's very easy to, for example, when everybody from all the Ukraine send you kind of some data you see this is copied from from everywhere yeah kind of it's like just you hide the kind of auto and just send like you all do small rewrite and so forth and uh, it was like you know one time like some kind of feature idea that aha uh -huh, what, what this is kind of the idea of the journalist so you verify it you have team you are 
you can do mistake, but you are trying like to show that this is your word of these people. We were checking this for these ways. It was like, you know, of course it's written by in books, maybe on somewhere, but when you see this kind of in the work, this is it. We are now working with some automation and we stop this bot because the national police, like everybody was kind of showing the cool bot appeared, like wow, let's join this, this is sick. Uh, it's even security services, top officials, military share this bot, and we one day got nine thousand <laughs> of tickets, and, and, <laughs> and uh, uh, half of them was like uh, whether Zhirinovsky is alive or not. Like, and we, st we, we stopped with message, guys, sorry, let's wait until because no, we need to optimize this because we, we were disrupted by this request, yeah, and. Uh, and now we, the most interesting, we were thinking on automatization. Uh, we were hoping that people would be sending links to media. You know, for example, they link to media. I know some national, we check this. And uh, if another person sends the same link, uh, we would not check it, it would be checked automatically because it's already checked. So it's for duplicates. And second one, uh, we launched white and black list. Uh, we used for this kind of white uh, so there is some media monitoring organization it's kind of distribution of trust yeah we're, we're trying to concept that uh, there is some different kind of white media called uh, with editorial standards and so forth and you are pbc we put uh, to the and another one so if people send from their telegram channel or we have kind of official data from kind of um, we had a situation in ukraine that was created fake pages of the military fake pages of the regional administrations and um, we also put them to white list so if people send data from there we check this kind of notice this is automating check blah 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 uh, this is kind of 90 percent but still be cautious because it also can be uh, i know hacked basically yeah, and so forth and um, this is how it goes now we uh, pause it we add some optimization features and we you know, usually people are trying to make process easier, yeah, like kind of, for example, to check out in one button or something like that. But we are working now on making process harder. So they would not be able to just forward check whether, I don't know, my neighbor says that, I don't know, something bad happened. Can you check in, I don't know, some village, rural village? And for us, it's very difficult. And we plan to not to work with Western Ukraine and uh, central one but not only where like russians are coming mostly like uh, is western with eastern uh, southern Kherson, and we plan to divide type of requests on i know my life depends from this it would help me in decision making and you know some another variant just to filter and reject automatically like right. this, this would be the approach and we are working on this data so this is how it goes sorry yeah. it's long <laughs> No, no, thank, thank, thanks so much for explaining, for show, showing us how it works. Um, I mean, it, 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 it's an initiative, it's an amazing initiative that ties into a discussion, I mean, all over the world, which is a discussion about disinformation and propaganda and fake news and figuring out what's really going on. And, and maybe Yaroslav and, and, and Dasha, maybe I can ask you about this also because of the two very radically different positions phys uh, geographically that you're in. I mean, you're both, of course, like in the middle of this invasion and, and it's your country, it's your place, it's your people. And at the same time, you're also looking, I mean, especially for you, Dasha, traveling to all these countries now being in Italy, you're seeing how the world informs itself about what's going on in your country. I mean, how, how do you see that? I mean, how do you see the whole discussion about this information? Uh, what do you know? How do you, I mean, uh, what kind of impact did this kind of, uh, 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 you know, the, 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 how hard it is to get to the truth of everything? How, how does that impact you? C can you talk a little bit about what this information means to you? Because you're so, yeah, I mean, you're other than me. I mean, I'm far away. I'm safe. I'm privileged. Uh, 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 well, not that far away, but but I'm wondering how that feels for you. Uh, thank you for a question. Uh, people in Europe uh, informed by war in Ukraine, uh, but uh, there are no only baddest uh, crime stories uh, like Bucha, Gostomel, or something else. And uh, some uh, we mentioned that some channels uh, don't mention that it's war, like uh, four channel and uh, 
ABC, I, I saw that ABC uh, also causes like conflict, like uh, mm. cra crisis, uh, but uh, it's real war. Uh, so uh, people don't know about uh, that we need to close the skies. Uh, people don't uh, know that we are need uh, some weapons or some help. There are no about uh, crime stories in Ukraine. Uh, we mentioned that uh, some people uh, asking uh, people uh, people in Ukraine uh, kind of how I feel. Uh, what uh, do you feel safety or something else? But uh, there are don't interested in like this real conflict. Uh, uh, maybe people need uh, some stuff. Maybe uh, uh, territorial defense. Yes, uh, needs some help. There are just uh, so crying stories, and uh, it's uh, it's good. Maybe uh, this uh, touch their hearts, but uh, Ukraine need help. I think uh, we uh, we need uh, some uh, actions from Europe. We need uh, some uh, actions from maybe uh, France or Germany. Yes, but there are just. Uh, uh, telling crime stories uh, about the informations uh, we uh, checking uh, from the first day of uh, of both working uh, we uh, checked news uh, um, we checked news to, uh, our team yes uh, sir he checked me uh, olena sometimes and uh, we were shocked because uh, information here is uh, <laughs> Sometimes it's uh, sorry, but it's shit uh, real. Uh, we saw uh, we saw careful videos. We saw scorps. We saw anything that uh, y people can find on internet, and uh, it's uh, it's a little difficult because. Uh, People uh, sent us uh, some news uh, like um, vacuum bomb on Kharkiv and uh, people panic, but uh, there isn't vacuum bomb on Kharkiv. So, and uh, information kind of this uh, uh, disturb the uh, distribution uh, very quickly. So, and I would it. And uh, the type of things like Dasha saying kind of vacuum bomb or kind of whether it's kind of exactly this uh, flight was shot over the Kharkiv or not, it's very difficult to investigate. Uh, very difficult. Yes. So basically, CNN, BBC was investigating these cases. Vacuum bomb, now it's kind of discussion with phosphorus bomb, but we get, you know, a lot of uh, uh, data from kind of unofficial source, semi-official sources uh, that this might happen, uh, but it's it's uh, give a huge wave of panic and shock on the people. And uh, as we were talking with uh, soldiers and warriors, they said that uh, Russians do this in order to spread the panic among civil uh, population so that they would uh, press on the military in order to stop the war, go to peace, like with people who come to us and kill people like just for fun, yeah? like and the people, horses, destroy buildings. Uh, my parents kind of in, in Izum, it's uh, 100 kilometers from uh, Kharkiv and they can go from there, they're isolated and 80% of the city is destroyed. Yeah, like just bomb from yesterday and uh, from every day. And uh, uh, and in the same time, we see that uh, narratives, uh, we are like not super expert, of course, in that narrative because it's much more stronger for the team. Like, uh, you know, it's Ukrainians did so. Like Ukrainians were living up in 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 the same town and started to kill us by themselves. So what's the shit? And they do this so horrible um, with such open eyes, like 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 this is true. And you know, I couldn't believe that it's possible to say like this. So so you say on the word on the white black on the black you say white white everywhere. And put this into the global media and trying to push this uh, forward. You run for today UN UN Council like first one yeah after war crimes first one uh, so that to be first and started to say about uh, us 
like in our country we was like sleeping and uh, this almost impossible to believe it's so strong and so like you know you were sitting like it's impossible to say like this on the on the white so so black on so white and, and so forth and you say and maybe the core of the idea is to say it on the black white so hard so nobody could believe that it could be not true you know maybe mm. this is a tactic like kind of it's you say on the black white so impossible white so like like normal people like and like thinking oh of course it's impossible like to lie like this like you know this is core of the idea and uh, they do this like and this is how it goes and we and this is also supported by a lot of uh, smaller one tactics and the smaller one stuff that is supporting all these operations basically yeah Yaroslav, do you have an observation about disinformation and how it affects you and the people around you well i agree with everything that you guys said and i can a little add that um there are a lot of information right now this about this blah and a lot of this information is a fakes and uh, disinformations uh their target is uh, spread panic and um the problem is many of people uh, they can't investigate this and uh they start to panic and uh, they don't know what they uh, to do and also uh, about this i know the people that they still thinking about uh, that we have bombed uh, us uh, themselves himself and this is horrible uh, but a lot of people believe in this information and i can't uh, say how to fix it really that's why we create this bot for right. some little help but yeah. this, it's just like like that yeah just, like the... yeah. yeah um uh, another thing that that Vara media is doing or or a service at least that you're offering i don't know how much you've been able to to, to do this yet uh, given the circumstances is to help foreign journalists to do uh, a good reporting uh, on the ground in Ukraine. Uh, um, sometimes that kind of work is called fixing or, or something like that. Uh, uh, but but it's it's basically doing journalistic work, uh, but helping foreign. I mean, and I know there's well over a thousand foreign journalists uh, working in Ukraine at the moment. Um, can you tell us a little bit about, about what, what, what that kind of work involves? Have you been able to do that? And, and what's your experience uh, with that? So <clears throat> here I would, I would add uh, maybe it's a little bit broad in context. Uh, so as we, so there is a media of national scope, yeah, kind of like kind of biggest one. You are PBC, some Pravda, some else, something like that. And uh, of course, they have their duties like kind of like that. But for us, as we are, we are small, uh, wanna be big or medium regional media, yeah. And we understand about kind of that all what we do is to run. Uh, we were doing with Yaroslav some diaries, like we had all of maybe all of us had the choices. We had to we could kind of to run totally, like not like dash run and work, yeah, in the way. We could, you know, just become refugees, stay on the board, like some trying to do something, blah, 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 uh, st looking for food. We, we were able, you know, to go to the maybe territorial defense or something like that. I was so, so in, in our shelter, uh, 23 years cool guy. He was sitting with us. He disappeared for three days. And in three days, he come fully equipped with, with a weapon and he is fighting kind of on the streets against Russians to protect his country or to continue to work as media and to do what we can, yeah? And of course we should re by impact and one of the choices we understand that we of course would be continue operating locally. Of course we would produce local content, but here is also another media like, and uh, they do content, some shooting, something else. And what to do impact is to, for me sometimes is to pick whether to, I don't know, write some video and distribute it for, I know, 100,000 views, yeah? Or kind of something like that and, uh, or, to fix, I know, for example, you know, Big Ten media, yes, that come in here from the world, 
and uh, show this for 100 you know, million people in uh, you know, France, in whatever, in UK, in other cities. And of course, if to think about impact, uh, I decided that we sometimes could prioritize this and uh, to pick this help, yeah, like kind of about fixing and uh, exit. So uh, I didn't heard about this before, this work, and, and I mm -hmm. never saw like kind of amount of kind of people that would come to Ukraine. I was thinking even this in discussing with somebody what we should do so that what we should do so that the amount of journalists come here, like kind of in Ukraine with peaceful aim, yeah, like kind of to show, you know, maybe Olympic Games, like maybe something like, what is it, what could they, so I saw this kind of flow of people, like from, you know, from New York Times to something else, like, and uh, it's horrible situation that they come here, like in like the case why they come, but as they come, as they here, let's uh, think what we should do with this, yeah, how to increase impact. And, uh, we, did, we we even created like internal chat calls international <laughs> where we sharing all the contacts people who write us and so forth and of course it was uh, especially low amount of supporters fixers in the conflict area like Kharkiv, uh, Kyiv also more or less uh, and uh, it's a huge flow so there is no such infrastructure of some fixed communities here like kind of this vulture club in Facebook uh, cool right. community I wrote there and like it's like flown like a wave of people who were writing yo cool let's be in touch and uh, we started to help uh, basically we were helping a lot with context just I don't know this is how we met with cool guys from UK and started to work on documentary uh, S9 called uh, agency uh, and we were sharing like trying to do some help also like in meantime Sharing contacts, you know, some official sources like big Excel waves, some pre prepared already content for use uh, for some people, like, uh, and we still continue. Like, some people write, I say, go there, this is some data, and, you know, some press pack for newcomers. Yeah. Mm. Uh, but then they started to spend with them some time, and uh, I also was spending so in fixing uh, 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 Olena. Dasha helping with uh, communicating with international media, like writing articles, giving contacts, uh, sharing experience, some advices, what to check. Lena was writing for uh, Eurozine, for uh, another international media, seems like some for uh, Nach Kritik uh, in Germany was writing. And uh, as I'm on location and uh, I uh, started, and for me, uh, I have some limitation for in the beginning, I, I was not having press jacket, I was not having car, and for me it was uh, important, important to shoot, so I started to fix them and just in Kharkiv, using their cars, <laughs> get together and uh, uh, work together, do some shots, you know, like they shoot and me shot, then I do this like local report and it's like win-win situation mm -hmm. uh, and of course uh, here is lack of trust to media to local media because we have um, historical ties and all the telegram channels like people very afraid from propaganda maybe saying who is are you like maybe you are and there is huge panic like when you come and shoot local they say oh you will shoot me now tomorrow our area will be bombed and we all die yeah like oh and, uh, yeah and uh, I see that for me it's easier to access when we come. I you know I have two international journalists and me, they do shoot and I do shoot. Uh, I use them like a straightforward way to come and build trust because uh, people locally more, I see, I believe so. So if, at, if you do not know them, it's uh, kind of not warm contact. They be, believe more international journalists locally, because and also, but they, who are you? Are you from Spain or right. Italy or France? Um, let's talk, maybe. Yeah, and it helps. And uh, but then I understood that about impact that um, uh, we can do more. And uh, I started to work with Fixer like daily. So I was working for four, four days today. I took day off or five. Yesterday was a national police uh, car, and we were working with them till night. And uh, I was taking like that light, that camera I was, <laughs> was catching the journalist through his back when they was catching some possible diversant to say, stop, don't go there. And he's going, <laughs> and I'm taking this was <laughs> like for this, like, stop, don't go, wait until they will solve this. Uh, and um, it goes well. And I see the more impact I can do if I spend with them. 
uh, kind of several days because uh, um, because it's better but i see a different situation because it's uh, it's so we know uh, all of this all of us can google this article yeah was new lab about fixers about fixers relationship with journalists and so forth uh, what i see in the beginning it was a lot of people there was two type of people one of them was working in conflict zone uh, in syria or wherever they come here they were more or less understanding what is happening here like uh, but there were some kind of passengers, <laughs> chocolate could call them, that come, like, uh -huh. you know, not prepared, without helmets. Uh, they were walking on the streets after curfew. We have accreditation that is about curfew, that, but they easily could be shot, you know, like, kind of, it's, uh, mm. it's on, only on the paperwork on curfew. Basically, you'd be stopped on every checkpoint and that you would be uh, checked by a lot because uh, we saw the cases. I was speaking with some supply officer from some army brigade. Uh, it was cases of um, fake journalism passes to the by Russians uh, sabotage groups to the to wow. Poltava. It was case. She, she showed me that uh, she is from army. I do not have the kind of reason to not trust her. And uh, it was strange. Yeah, like kind of. And of course, there's different types of people. Of course, there's cool some freelance guys who working on themselves, some private entrepreneurs to do some shots. Of course, there's some freelancers who come for big media. Yeah, it's kind of more, kind of more impact could do. Every every kind of work is appreciated. Everybody, but um, all of them have different circumstances. Somebody just come with himself. There is no car, no jackets, nothing like. Somebody comes with car. Somebody cars works with team, and. Uh, so I prioritize it and uh, divide it all of this in different groups. And now I'm trying to, as uh, mostly as fixer, I work uh, same in Kharkiv and uh, I'm more moving. I have a car and uh, have jacket and we have now in insurance. Uh, so uh, I spent se several days with guys, with groups to shot something and uh, we published, for example, France 24 published some article uh, and it's really strong. Uh, I showed him the guy that fled. Is it said and they come? Is it case? For example, guys from one channel come and said we wanna do some shot about pets, and they said okay, let's go. We went to guy who was having a flat. I can send them this report later. Uh, his flat was destroyed by bomb. It was uh, fully. It's not a civic quarter. Nothing south of kind Kharkiv. It was blow up fire his uh, like bird and cat was died and totally kind of you know it was in fire and only bones left so mm. and that man pick up the bones so his lovely cat put in the pocket and this old man of course it's hard for him put the candle and show us this kind of i forget boss or how what's the cat name and so this to journalism is this destroyed flat and uh, this is kind of the story about animals what we have here kind of not uh, you know like um uh, and uh, this is about the kind of impact that fixers could do yeah kind of what's the story you found of course it's not kind of you just do propaganda but for them it's difficult to find these people i was riding in this area i met these people i didn't even use it he have that child. i just use it his flat burnout but when we met and we started to dig it's happened like that i was looking my hands and the head and saying oh my god and uh, also there is some situation so uh, all that groups are coming everybody want to some official data meet mayor blah 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 but it's not working they are busy they are you know in kharkiv mayor of the city might went sometimes between stations in the underground by his legs because he can be on the street. I'm not sure that this happens, but I heard this in four, whether it's true or not, I can't say. And uh, it's the situation, how it goes, and uh, journalists kind of don't understand. You know, they try and why is no officials can support us? Because, you know, officials can support us because uh, Oblast Regional Department was struck by missiles three times, buildings mm -hmm. fully destroyed in Kharkiv, and there is no other building. So, city governor uh, riding on the roads of the uh, regional governor riding on the road of the street with um, kind of protected car and uh, we just negotiated with his press secretary to 
can he spend his 15 minutes just for picture yeah and the uh, journalist and uh, i understand the press secretary he, that she was checking me like kind of hey man are you sure that this video would be published in the international media or just just wanted to meet because there is sometimes some guy come just asking questions that they get get in general data and don't show this video and right. they understand that if they will not publish i will be losing my relationship with this kind of person so this is hard and uh, uh, of course it's uh, important to protect them like not to pass like through this <laughs> back take and not to pass uh, for example we were in police car for me it's also i also teach from this of course alone uh, alone alone from this and um, so we were in police car and policemen really pick up after curfew four very strange people on the street yeah uh, and they started to pack them to the car because it's prohibited to walk it was russian near, uh, zone nearby russians and journalists run to them but uh, it's really could be kind of sabotage group that start to shoot over the but they were kind of it's uh, it seems like they were people as policemen say yes, people who are could be the marauder group yeah they are some locals uh, one of them was sitting in the jail for stealing something they were watching in the night so this is kind of filtration activities they need to pick them put them under the jail to investigate them and so forth but they also could be sabotage group i was speaking with romeo later about that that um, anything could happen you know like and uh, now maybe it's more or less stable but if, if this early it could be much worse basically so this is how it goes and uh, in ukraine we have big limitations for journalists because uh, kind of a lot of them don't understand that this is war they kind of for example, yesterday, by the way, from Netherlands was dispelled some guy from yeah. Ukraine, <laughs> and uh, he I understand him. Uh, we see this kind of um, struggling, yeah, uh, and I understand that uh, all the time, uh, kind of soldiers all the time say this is prohibited. I think in every conflict, yeah, but uh, we see this kind of. But the important is that in Ukraine there is still possible compromise, yeah. There is some press tour, it's possible to some somewhere, but not where they want, you know, like, blah, blah. but of course, somebody doing like some just, oh, you know, this is the base, it was not bombed, you missed the Russians, let repeat, yeah, like, kind of like that. Right. And um, of course, uh, it's hard to to access to some points. Of course, there's a lot of responsibility for international journalists. And by the way, I don't see a lot of journalists from Europe in kind of, where Russia do attacks, but we saw their special forces, like that, you know, journalist special forces, yeah, like or kind of media special forces that are uh, work is embedded propaganda journalism of Russia. But we, I don't see the, a lot of international journalists kind of where they are, like where they, why they don't. Um, yeah, they why... see, they seem to be mostly in in Lviv and and to some extent in Kiev. Yeah. Maybe Olena, have you've had that experience with foreign journalists, or maybe either seeing them or helping them or. or being a fixer or something like that no honestly honestly i haven't uh met foreign journalists here as, as a fixer um uh, during the first uh one or maybe two weeks of this invasion i got cold so uh i don't feel like i, I can do this <clears throat> i just work from my home mm -hmm. uh like that <clears throat> I met foreign journalists and I communicate with them only like in chats. Uh, uh, we discussed uh, things about article that uh, was published like in Yevrozin and things like that. So uh, <clears throat> that's what I'm doing here. Um, look, I'm, I mean, I I find it incredible that all of you are taking the time to to talk with me uh, in in these 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 circumstances. Uh, I mean. Uh, for what it's worth, I mean, it's incredibly important, I think, and powerful to get your story out uh, in an unfiltered, unedited, whatever kind of way. And and so maybe to conclude our, our, our session today, I would like to offer each of you, I would ask you to maybe Tell a little bit or say what you feel needs to be saying. Dasha, you said earlier how important it is that people understand that this is really a war, right? This is not just some kind of conflict. This is not, you know, uh, uh, this is a war in all of that. It's an invasion. Um, what do people need, really need to know about the situation, about you, about Guara Media, about the situation in Ukraine and 
and I can imagine a lot of people who are watching this, who will be watching this, a lot of people feel like they want to do something and how can they support you, uh, the work that you're doing and the work that uh, um, uh, the people in, in, in the creative sector in, in Ukraine are, are doing. Um, maybe everybody wants to say something, uh, but please feel free uh, to speak. I would love to hear that. Who wants to go first? <laughs> maybe, maybe I can. Thanks, Elena. Uh, yes. Yeah, I, I can. Uh, I want to support Dasha's statement about uh, this uh, terms in which people uh, usually see this from abroad. Uh, I mean, it, it's really it's not offensive, but uh, you feel the, the the difference when you read a term uh, a kind of conflict or a kind of crisis but you for you it's 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 absolutely clear that uh, it's it's not like ukrainian crisis because uh, ukraine is it was more or less fine without this russian invasion it's absolutely uh, absolutely clear and uh, like i can see it in 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 other ways um Regarding support, uh, like Ukrainian people in Guaranita, uh, by the way, I also want to mention that uh, uh, I had a kind of uh, insight maybe during the first days, and it was also, uh, I, then I put it in, in, in my diary in this year as in, um, uh, <clears throat> I understood that or rather, I, I felt that this this experience of hearing this sound of, of alarm, of uh, bomb somewhere, I don't know, maybe in the outskirts of the city, uh, I feel like you, you can't really uh, transfer, uh, you can't really share this experience with a lot of photos uh, and, and, and texts and videos. It's really hard to make people understand that uh, uh, it, 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 it's, it, 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 it's really strange to listen to the conversa conversations about the, you know, falling the economy or a gas prices or things like that uh, when you hear the sound of alert and you hear the sound of, of bomb and uh, you are, it, it's absolutely true for you that there, uh, there's only one value uh, that you can talk about and this is people's life. Mm. Uh, <clears throat> And I was wondering just uh, in what way we can uh, share this, uh, th this very idea, I mean, that uh, conversations about uh, whether we should support you more or less because our prices are growing, it's just, uh, it's like, it, it, it's very strange. Uh, of course, it's a bit uh, hypocritic maybe. And uh, so yeah, th th that's how it feels at least. Um, yeah, and again, re regarding support, uh, Guaranita, uh, well, I think people can just read us. <laughs> uh, for them, um, we <clears throat> do have, we, uh, yeah, we have several options for those who can, who want to support us. Uh, they can, uh, can become our members, for example. They can buy membership. Uh, and we uh, we was preparing this uh, model of membership, by the way, before the war uh, <clears throat> started. Um, they can do donates, uh, so we can continue our work both in fixing, in journalism, uh, in uh, 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 this project of, of this board. Because uh, of course we don't have uh, any kind of uh, advertisement here today and things like that. And uh, um, maybe this is uh, quite clear, but maybe this is the the most um, like d direct uh, yeah way to support us. But maybe today it's more uh, important to support our army. Mm. Um, I remember. Uh, when you asked me, uh, I recalled uh, my dialogue with one of uh, German journalists. I was preparing uh, an article about how, so I, I'm uh, originally, um, I studied like theater studies in university. Uh, and uh, uh, since 
before this thing uh, began, I was writing several articles articles about how how do our theater makers and filmmakers uh, experience in this uh, this war. And uh, one of the journalists told me that they collect uh, uh, they they are ready to send uh, like a humanitarian help uh, some money to the shelters and things like that. And I told her that, wow, that's nice. That's really like, I appreciate that and things like that. But maybe <clears throat> today is much more uh, important under these circumstances to support, to just to directly support our army if they can and if they want, of course. Because, uh, uh, yeah, because all these things, uh, just on individual level, it's, it's great and it's very, and valuable, but uh, here we understand that this we can we can return our, our normal life only if we just won in this war, and of course we want to um, to do this as as uh, quickly as, it, as as possible. Thank you so much, uh, Olena, um, Dasha, or Yaroslav. Do you want to add to this? Mm, uh, how I say before that uh, people in Ukraine uh, need uh, more strong actions from Europe, uh, mm. from France and uh, Germany maybe because uh, we know that uh, Germany uh, give Russians uh, weapons and uh, it's unexpected. <laughs> we we need uh, support of these people. We need uh, we want to see their actions. Uh, to help us more than just sending money and or uh, saying oh uh, we crying okay just more strong actions and uh, Serhi maybe you can some uh, add some yeah I want to add that kind of um, it's cool <laughs> like no uh, don't it's kind of not kind of talk about like oh what to do what to help it's great that everybody's thinking about this we feel of course everybody mobilized and uh, they do something but you know uh seems like something really uh, horrible happens yeah like kind of globally uh, it's not kind of about conflict they started earlier yeah they do the power mobilization in russia they was working against independent media in russia I don't believe that uh, maybe something what left, yeah, like kind of something like last Medusa or kind of Dost, it's kind of very limited and they do not do what they can as journalists because they are limited, they kind of disrupted basically, they kind of trying, but it's very limited stuff. It's influence also, I believe it's not influencing on something a lot, like what's it's attempt, but it's not help. Uh, we feel that, uh, for example, Dasha said to win in war. Uh, so in they invaded to kill people yeah my parents um in zoom i was calling to them several times they can go because they're with old people and i don't know whether they would come or not yeah like kind of this is what happens like and they say it like russian says that this you remember this narrative denationalization yeah nazi in ukraine all the time so danger is that uh, it's if ukrainian army will not kick off them back and they will take this area like uh, their propaganda machine is so strong that it's on the go. She only can be the society could work, I believe. It's my personal opinion, only on uh, when this situation is continuing. Yeah. So that's why Baltic states are so worrying about this. This is that's why Poland is so worrying about this. And uh, yesterday, so very awful narratives like Peskov said in interview, uh, like seems like Europeans have some gene that do not help them to work with Russia. Yeah, we can live with this, but it's quite strange. You know, if, you know, they started about genes, like for internal audience, basically. Of course, mm -hmm. everybody abroad would understand that this is kind of shit, but uh, that's saying about this for internal audience. And when they, they, they don't, they, not, they do not respond to us. They say this only for their needs to operate, to save power and so forth. But they just started to tell this. They were joking about atomic strikes. Yeah, we really were discussing here, like in shelter, right? what to do. Maybe they would do give atomic strike on us. For example, if they couldn't uh, uh, 
fix Ukraine, as they say, kind of by their troops and they will kick off and it seems like it's already happened. They're kicking off. Yeah, yesterday I was in Chuguyev in Malarogan in Kharkiv Oblast. They kicked off basically, yeah, and army motivated and want to kick them off, not because they are kind of because they invaded to independent country. They invaded eight years ago. They took Donbass, they do Crimea, they do all of this stuff, and they just taking our blood, like in general, money, resources, people kill, spare our time, not just to allow to be okay, yeah. And uh, if they would not be stopped, it would be happen somewhere else. It's not like kind of manipulation during call of raid. It's really would happen in Poland or Estonia or whatever. Maybe it would be atom. We really were discussing here with friends, like what to do if it would be limited atomic strike over Kharkiv. I discussed this serious question. I don't know what to do. We estimated whether a shelter is okay or not, or chemistry attack. Yeah, would it be or not? Like we also were discussing this seriously, not like Ha, ha, ha. Like in the beginning, well, I was not so brilliant. It was seriously discussing this like, kind of, and, and they allow this in their mind, you know, and they are in their television, they allow this, yeah? They, nobody like even can't, it would be banned immediately in the own civilized world, but they allow in their media these narratives, yeah? And this is very dangerous, and that's why it's a quest to help army, of course. I also want to say that if somebody is thinking to help, Maybe try to find, it's good to find some people and volunteer group or army defense or media in the rural areas, not kind of centralized national one, because it's already stacked, it's already filled, it's already overload. But yesterday I was in rural villages in Kharkiv Oblast and the city of Chuguyev, I can share maybe link there, people say that Chuguyev is okay, but villages nearby, they mine it. So people just blow up on mines, yeah, because it's mined or by Russians or by ours, not to pass, but roads is late and people are trying to access some food and facilities through the, you know, forest, yeah, like kind of, and this is horrible, and these people, like, are losing in the logistical chains, yeah, like, kinda. not because it's a very bad something, they're just losing logistical chains, and uh, that's the case, kind of, um, so... Uh, wanna say just i yet so wanna add and finish this like special because yesterday i was crying yeah it's funny but i, I, and I was smiling doing saying this but yesterday i was crying i i was in chuguyev i saw five i, I want to share this video later my friend from germany asked me i do some investigation on um, kind of war crimes maybe gather some data you know and i was in chuguyev and they're walking in the area that bombed its private buildings and five uh, like troops say that it was it was press tour of course yeah i finally shot a couple checkpoints that is prohibited in ukraine this is them have some uh, pictures about that but she said like 500 kilograms air bomb just from on, on that uh, rural village and it's kind of big hole in the ground like 10 meters on five and all of buildings around is destroyed kind of and kind of, I was asking, and I was angry about his question, like, I don't know, just, you know, maybe it's, it's nervous. I was, it's kind of, I was asking him in the video, it was emotional, of course, yeah, but I was asking him, how do you think, Chris, is it kind of for crime or not, kind of, how do you think? I, I, I wrote this video, shared it with him, not because I kind of angry, but kind of, you can't afford this, you know, understanding, like, where's the houses, how to stand against this kind of and then i come uh, evening to butch uh, to home and was started to read over the situation about butch about the stuff they do and i, could, I st started to cry a little bit yeah, like and i can't afford this what to do we can't so and we understand that they were trying this all the time yes i, I understand this this might be order because this is kind of psychology operation against kind of nation yeah like kind of so the, people got weak people start crying let's go run Olen and me have uh, kind of kind of friends that was running from the butcher. Uh, she has published her story about this that she could kill. There is killed people. There is broken cars everywhere. Uh, there is pieces of bodies everywhere. Like yeah, kind of. I saw tank destroyed, and this is happens like like nearby. So thank you for doing this like in circuit for discussing this and taking attention to this but i believe this is kind of something more and this is crucial for everybody in the eu in kind of even civilized world so we should continue to keep standing so thank you
Thank you, Sari. Thank you, Yaroslav, Olena, and Vasha. Thank you so much for taking the time for 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 sharing your story. It's it's um, yeah, it's hard to say anything meaningful about this, but 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 I I, I hope. Uh, that that just listening to your stories and hearing your stories, I will share the video. I will share, of course, the links to the work that you are doing and to the pages where people can support you, as of course the Ukrainian army. And 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 if at all possible, let's let's keep in touch and hope we meet in person to uh, to talk about uh, all these experiences when all this horrificness is is over. But but for now, thank you again from the bottom of my heart for taking the time to do this, and and thank you for keeping up your work as storytellers. It's so incredibly important for all of us to hear uh, what's going on. Thank you. Too. Thank you for attention. Thank you too, Mark.